democracy has become a profitable export for one international group. It started off as a student movement in Serbia. With the backing of the US, became a worldwide brand for revolutions. What is Lucy Kafanov investigates? This is the business of selling a look. Sky-high heels, barely there clothes, revolutionary styles exported from the fashion capitals of the world. Hello, I'm Marovic, Ivan Marovic. And Make this cool. is the business Make of selling, hip. well... Revolution as a fashion line. Exporting how-to lessons in revolution, aided by the democracy capital of the world. Democracies, after all, aren't born knowing how to run themselves. A decade ago, Marovic launched the Serbian student movement that helped oust President Slobodan Milosevic. The group was called Otpor, resistance, and it bore the now familiar symbol of the clenched fist. But behind the spontaneity of the uprisings was a carefully researched strategy guided by the West. Nebojša Malic is a Balkans columnist who's been chronicling the events in Serbia since 1999. The, the Otpor movement itself uh, was just a tiny student organization that it got subverted, taken over. The operatives then expanded it, turned it into a branding empire, and ended up basically running the ground, the, the uh, grassroots level uh, of the revolution, thus turning it into an astroturf one. They were run by the NED, which uh, very openly goes in and says our goal is to promote democracy. A New York Times investigation documented the extent of U.S. assistance. According to journalist Roger Cohen, Atpour was no ramshackle students group, but a well-oiled movement backed by several million dollars from the U.S. The objective is regime change. The objective is to install a government that will uh, execute orders. The worst thing about all this is that it's undermining a concept that enabled the United States to claim moral leadership in the world in the first place. With Milosevic gone, Ivan Marovic now spends his time advising activists abroad. Ever since I've been traveling the world and teaching people how to get rid of their pesky dictators. So I have come up with these three easy steps so you too can get in on the action and laugh your way to freedom. The video was made by students at the School of Authentic Journalism in Mexico for Narco News TV. But Ivan has helped develop a video game called A Force More Powerful, in which players can practice scenarios like organizing mass protests and overthrowing dictators. Today, Otpor is called Canvas. And with the help of the internet, their methods and symbols are exported the world over, from the color revolutions in Georgia and Ukraine to Venezuela and the Arab Spring uprisings in Egypt. William Engdahl has written for over 30 years about Washington's secret geopolitics. He's convinced that Canvas is not acting alone. The instigators of those uh, so-called spontaneous protests, these Twitter revolts in Cairo and, and uh, Tunisia and so forth, have all been pre-organized uh, assiduously. Some of the people, leaders of the protests, have been trained in, in uh, Belgrade, in Serbia, by Otpor activists financed by the U.S. State Department. Uh, this thing has State Department and U.S. intelligence all over it. Three easy steps, and that's all it takes to overthrow your very so own you government. So has revolution become a commodity, a product that could be branded, packaged, mass-produced, and exported all across the globe? Well, just like Ivan's video, this too, of course, is a spoof. But the game of regime change is quite real, and its unintended consequences can be downright dangerous. It's ultimately the American taxpayer, I think, who's getting uh, the, the short end of the bargain because they're, they're bankrolling people that are going around the world fomenting astroturf revolutions that are eventually uh, backfiring and they're backfiring all over the place. And once the people find out who was behind this, their anger turns to the American government and the American people. Once you master a recipe, you can repeat it over and over. An easy recipe, but the aftermath may be the hardest. Lucy Kafanov, RT, Washington.